Item 27 is a resolution to designate which newspapers or periodicals the city's community advertising and neighborhood outreach will be placed within the small business exchange for outreach to the African American community, El Reportero, outreach to the Hispanic community, the World Journal, SFLLC, and the Sing Dao Daily, outreach to the Chinese community, the Bay Area Reporter and the San Francisco Bay Times for outreach to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community, Jasmine Blue Media, LLC, doing business as the Marina Times, for outreach to the Marina Cow Hollow, the North Beach, and Chinatown neighborhoods, the Potrero View for outreach to the Potrero Hill, Dog Patch, Mission Bay, and the Eastern Soma neighborhoods, the Richmond Review, outreach to the Richmond District neighborhoods, the Sunset Beacon for outreach to the Sunset District neighborhoods, the Noe Valley Voice, outreach to the Noe Valley and Diamond Heights neighborhoods to, again, provide outreach advertising for fiscal year 20 through 21. Uh, Supervisor President. Thank you, uh, President Yi um, and colleagues. There are a number of uh, important outlets that provide useful and accurate information to the residents of city and county of San Francisco. And I support uh, our efforts uh, through this uh, to use city funds to, to pay for the noticing of uh, items of public interest in their respective pages. Um, there is, however, one outlet on uh, this list uh, that I would not include in the former category, uh, and that is the Marina Times. Uh, this is an entity that has proven time and again uh, that they are a mouthpiece for disinformation, uh, doxing of public officials, and personal attacks. Um, I consider them on par with the likes of uh, Breitbart News and Tucker Carlson in serving to the public uh, fact-free and often hate-filled uh, propaganda. Um, I don't believe that a single penny of public money should be directed from uh, city and county of San Francisco to support their efforts. Uh, and therefore, I am making a motion uh, to amend the resolution to strike all references to the Jasmine Blue Media uh, LLC DBA uh, Marina Times as the neighborhood outreach periodical for the Marina, Cal Hollow, North Beach, and Chinatown neighborhoods. Thank Second. You. Second, Ronan, and Second, happy to okay. speak as well. I wish I could raise. Yeah, so I got, I have others on online. So Supervisor Safa, you know. I, if you could put me on the stack, please. Yes, I am. Uh, Supervisor Safa, you are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I, uh, I didn't necessarily want to speak to this uh, uh, amendment, but I did want to speak to the item. If if it's if it's the will of the president, that's okay. Why don't Why don't I go and uh, we we stick with the amendment first and we'll do that. Okay, and then back. please please come back to me. Thank you. I will. Uh, and Supervisor Peskin, are you speaking to the amendment? Maybe. If you are, then go ahead. So, Mr. President, colleagues, I think that this is actually a much larger issue of public policy. And I will speak to the amendment directly, um, which is uh, let me be very clear. Um, and I say this as somebody who publishes, not every month, but many months a year, an article in the Marina Times, uh, which people may or may not like, which may or may not have typos. Um, but we have to be very, very careful in the current age of uh, the way we choose to honor or dishonor or pay or not pay um, media that we agree with, or in this case, uh, as expressed by Supervisor Preston, disagree with. But I think what is implicated here, Mr. President, is Proposition J, um, which came uh, from the Fang family, and it's then political warlord Jack Davis, um, that created the advertising regimen that the voters approved in Proposition J in the 1990s, when I think Frank Jordan was mayor, if my memory serves. And I think that we really have to have a public policy conversation 
about Proposition J and its utility in the age of the internet. Um, and yes, we want to use taxpayer dollars to make sure that El Reportero and various newspapers continue to make sure that there is access by many, many communities to all of the information that Ms. Calvillo and many departments disseminate, regardless of the editorial content. So I think this really implicates a larger uh, public policy conversation around Proposition J. Um, and we, we've wrestled with this. We uh, wrestled with this relative to the largest advertising contract that has variously over several decades gone back and forth between the Chronicle and the Examiner that now sits with the Examiner. Um, all of those uh confines are set forth under Proposition J, and Prop J may be outdated. And I think it is really incumbent on all of us and departments to rethink that, and I suspect go back to the voters to change Prop J, to make it more relevant in the age of the internet, and to ensure that those people who do not have access to the internet have access to the government's publications and notices. So I, I wanted to put it in that larger context. Um, having said that, uh, as a, from time to time, um, uh, publisher in the Marina Times, I support the motion made by Supervisor Preston, seconded by Supervisor Rook. Supervisor Stephanie. Thank you, President Yee. Um, just for the record, I found out about this potential amendment about 15 minutes before the board meeting. And obviously the Marina Times is a local paper in District 2. And I'm actually quite shocked by this amendment, this proposed amendment. And just thinking about it in the short time that I had to think about this, I cannot stress enough the troubling consolidation of local news outlets throughout this entire country in the last what in the in the last century really is coincided with the rise of social media companies and president trump's vicious attacks on the first amendment and sadly this has created a media ecosystem that leaves individuals without access to quality news and public servants unaccountable to the people we are supposed to serve and in the last 15 years According to a study of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, a quarter of all U.S. newspapers have died. And what does that do? It creates news deserts and harmful information vacuums. And then what happens? Companies like Twitter and Facebook then act as the gatekeepers of this information. And we know our outgoing president has degraded the First Amendment and denigrated journalism. I mean, how many times have you seen him go after reporters because he doesn't like what they say? We cannot allow these trends to continue, and we certainly cannot facilitate them by killing off local outlets here in San Francisco. We must protect local journalism, even when we don't like what they say. The events of this year, including the city's response to COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing investigations into city hall corruption just to name two examples, have reminded us of the critical nature of local journalism. And it is, not, it is more important now than ever. <laughs> the choices we make here today will have lasting effects on how our communities get information and how we remain accountable to our constituents. If we choose to kneecap journalism during this time of intense economic distress, it could never come back. In the Marina Times, whether you like it or not, whether you like what they say about you or not, is an essential neighborhood publication that has existed for years. It serves thousands of residents in the Marina, Cal Hollow, and beyond. Removing the Marina Times without any viable alternative presents residents of these neighborhoods, constituents I represent, from receiving important information about what's happening here in the city. And just because we don't agree with the political views of its editorial staff, 
doesn't mean we should cut thousands of San Franciscans off from this information. And I believe your amendment is going to do just that. As a public servant and as an attorney, it is my responsibility to fight for the First Amendment. And when I first heard about this proposed amendment, I literally could not believe it. Well, I may not always agree with what is printed in the Marina Times, don't like what they've said about me at times, that is not for me to decide. And I will not be voting for this amendment today. It's wrong and it violates the First Amendment. Supervisor Ronan. Thank you, President Yee. I, I think we have to make a distinction between where how we spend public money to advertise uh, public meetings um, and, and, and what we call journalism. Uh, my basic uh, standards for, for journalism is that there uh, is a respect for truth and facts. And this is something that's been degraded substantially under the Trump administration, that when facts are presented that challenge the political take of this administration and, and news venues that ignore facts in order to present their world viewpoint as if, um, it, it, as if that was uh, it, it, news. It, it is wrong. And, and, and very sadly, there has been several instances where the Marina Times have been presented with facts that prove their politically based assertions as incorrect, and they refuse to retract um, their, their, their statements. And that's happened over and over again. And there comes a time where, you know, people can lie about whatever they want to lie about. But our responsibility as supervisors is to decide whether or not we want to support a outfit that presents lies as fact and, and when presented with fact refuting those lies, fails to retract them as an outfit that we want to support with the public money and dollars. And very sadly, because I, I would love uh, Cal Hollow and the marina and, and, and that part of the city and county of San Francisco to have a responsible news outlet where we could spend public dollars to uh, to advertise a city meetings. Sadly, Marina Times is doing a disservice to those neighborhoods by uh, becoming a, a, a purely propaganda uh, uh, outfit that, that uh, presents lies as fact. And um, to not take that responsibility seriously as policymakers, to me, is falling uh, a, a, following the, the horrendous example that has been set by the Trump administration, Fox News, Breitbart, and, uh, and, and other outfits uh, that uh, aren't responsible journalism, aren't journalism at all, but are uh, mouthpieces for a, 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 a certain political view. And that is irresponsible to me. So I wholeheartedly support uh, this amendment and hope that uh, our colleagues will join us and have basic standards for decency, truth, and facts. Thank you. Um, let me make a comment. I'm, I, um, some of the things that Supervisor Peskin said in terms of you know having a bigger discussion is is uh, I believe needs to be done. Um, I I can't sit here and know which paper does what. You know, I think uh, some some of you pay more attention than I do, but what I'm uh, I'm going to base my vote on on um, the fact that there's a lot <laughs> in my own district. Uh, people um, in the local uh, paper that write that do their writing, they don't necessarily agree with, agree with me much at all. And sometimes I wonder is facts or not. But still, there's once in a while I'll see some good articles in there. Um, and so for me, it's just a matter of 
do we start um, the, I, I can't today just make a judgment on the on the marina time when I really don't know much about them. And what I see listed are a number of um, publications to sort of diversify um, the outreach effort that I think eight years ago when we started talking about this, there, there were very few um, uh, smaller publications that were included in this. And I've seen that the lists have grown uh, over time. So that's where I'm coming from. And and certainly, you know, again, I'm not um, necessarily debating whether uh, Supervisor Preston with your comments, whether you're right or wrong. I just don't know. And 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 that's true for a lot of these uh, publications. Supervisor Preston again. Thank you, President Yi, and. Um... And, and thank you, colleagues, for your, your comments. Um, a, a, a couple of responses here. You know, first off, um, I think there is an interesting question of expenditure of city funds and the positions that uh, <laughs> that a paper takes. I mean, I, I do think that that is not the impetus for this, and I want to be very clear. There are plenty of papers that are highly critical of myself and others uh, who I would never make this type of motion about. Um, that said, I'm not sure we'd be precluded from that. And I do want to point out that as a body, this city, uh, this board has determined, for example, not to engage in, in contracts with, uh, with states uh, that have excessive limits on uh, a woman's right to choose and reproductive freedom, uh, which have uh, di allowed discrimination. Uh, this is a, uh, a contract to purchase advertising space um, and I think it's an interesting question, again, not one that I feel needs to be resolved in this motion. Uh, it is an interesting question whether if you had a right-wing publication that was a legitimate journalistic uh, effort, could the board choose not to place advertising dollars there or not? So uh, I agree that would warrant further discussion. But I want to be very clear here and respond. Uh, th this is not about in any way killing off journalism or anything like it. And I think we really, especially in this day, day and age, uh, need to distinguish between disagreements uh, on policy, disagreements with a political view, um, and stuff that is just way out of bounds. And I got to say, looking at, and I, I won't bore you with all the details, but when, you know, when the Marina Times tweets to ask me, whether I have children, how I would feel if they were killed and raped, and ends with a hashtag saying Preston's purge, which I take as a threat to my family. And when they engage in that type of behavior, shamelessly and regularly, like that's totally out of bounds. And that's not legitimate journalism, right? And, and it's not just me. I mean, and we've, as a board, talked about attacks on officials. When you when you engage in ridiculous gymnastics and accuse people of protecting child molesters and this and that because of totally unrelated things to anything at issue in your articles, I mean, just scroll through the Twitter feed and look at what we're talking about. So, colleagues, I, I don't think this poses the question of whether we should take advertising space in a, in a paper we disagree with. I think this poses the question, much like some of the anti-hate resolutions that we've talked about before that Supervisor Stephanie, uh, you, you sponsored around, there's certain stuff that is out of bounds and when you do it, you don't get to then come in and, and, and present yourself as just another journalist and, and get money from the city and county of San Francisco. Thank, Thank you, you Super Supervisor Preston for your um... Uh, additional remarks, you made me change my mind. Supervisor Peskin. Um, thank you, President Yi. Actually, um, as minds are being changed, uh, with all due respect to Supervisor Preston, who I joined in the beginning of this conversation, um, I'm going to do something that is very rare to me, and I am going to reverse. Uh, based on the words that I heard from my colleagues, Supervisors Preston and Ronan, uh, I am actually now getting troubled about the First Amendment. 
Uh, and, and, and by the way, through the president to Supervisor Preston, um, we've all been through a deeply dark and disturbing period in American history. But I actually still am able to distinguish between Twitter that has been abused by number 45 and by an individual named Susan Dyer Reynolds from the Maria Times and the actual publication. Uh, I can see Supervisor Preston is raising an eyebrow. These are um, tweets from the Marina Times. To the I president. understand that. They're very different media. And they are used differently in our society. But when I hear the words, I do not want this elected board to be the arbiter of what is okay or not okay First Amendment speech. And this is not an easy thing. Uh, we can award contracts. I do think we have to have the much larger public policy conversation about Proposition J. I do also think in the same breath that we have to talk about how the city uses next door. And um, we've got departments who frankly should be paying the city and those departments for content. But we're actually putting that out to a certain segment of the population. I think that should be implicated in this larger public policy conversation. But as I'm listening respectfully, and I mean it sincerely, uh, to the words that I've heard from my colleagues who, as you heard, I was going to agree with, this is probably not a good idea. And I actually think that we would have to have hearings to determine that the behavior and the standards that are being set forth this evening are true and correct. I don't think that we can do this as a matter of contract, um, and I reverse myself. Supervisor Walton. So on the roster is Supervisor Walton, Safi, Manderman, and then uh, Ronan. Thank you so much, President Yee, and thank you, colleagues. I am going to be uh, pretty brief. One, I don't think this is about First Amendment speech, and I believe a paper should be able to write what it wants, just like Supervisor Stephanie. I do not believe in censorship, and like Supervisor Peskin, this is a broader conversation that needs to happen. However, I do not believe taxpayers' money should go towards gossip, gossip and mischaracterization of facts, and we are not in a position right now to be defunding the paper. We're just saying we're not going to use city resources to advertise in a particular publication, which I don't think there's anything wrong with us denying resources to any publication, quite frankly. Um, but in this case, uh, especially, again, for a publication that may not focus on facts, but we don't have to spend taxpayers' money on any publication here in San Francisco. Supervisor Safai. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. President, I was not going to comment on this, uh, but I, I do have to say that I think the reasoning behind um, canceling the contract is, is somewhat disturbing to me. I think it's a slippery slope. I think that, yes, ultimately, we all ha always have the decision of who we contract with to do advertising and publication. I remember when I was first uh, elected to this body, there was an attempt to cut out the San Francisco Examiner um, by previous members of the of the board, we had a robust debate, and then ultimately the examiner was was allowed to remain. I think that there are always going to be times I have been the subject of salacious uh, lies and, and exaggerations from many different online uh, articles, uh, many of whom um, many members of the board uh, champion as a source of wonderful. Uh, journalism. I never have any issue with that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we're going to have disagreements. We're going to have um, people that I might think are not journalists, but at the end of the day, they fundamentally believe that they are. Um, and in this instance, uh, 
to respectfully to Supervisor Preston, um, this does not seem to be the, the venue uh, to have this uh, conversation. It seems to me that this should happen in committee. There should be an opportunity for this publication to come and present and the facts to be presented and there to be more of a robust conversation ultimately around um, what decision we make with regard to this periodical. What you read into the record as a parent sickens me and it would sicken me to receive something like that from someone that purports to be a journalist. That is awful um, and, and I feel for you as a parent. Um, but ultimately, um, I think we've, we've founded our democracy on freedom of speech and ultimately, um, I have a problem with, with this maneuver today. I think that there should be further conversation. Um, and, and if it's okay, uh, uh, actually I'll hold the remainder of my comments that I was going to make, uh, President Yee, about this overall item. We can come back to it after we vote on these amendments. Okay. Make Thank sure you. you put yourself back on the roster so I won't forget. Yes, sir. Supervisor Manaman. Yeah, thank you, President Yi. Um, I have to confess I'm uh, coming to this conversation from a place of some ignorance because I am not a regular reader of the Marina Times. Um, I have a vague and general sense that Susan Dyer Reynolds has tweeted or written things that are negative about me, but I don't actually, uh, I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and, uh, and I don't know what all is included in the Marina Times and how many folks rely on it, and um, how many stories and columns, and you know what role it plays uh, for folks in the neighborhoods that it serves. And I am, I think it is possible that with you know further time to reflect and look at the you know the communications and stories and tweets that I would be able to reach a conclusion that perhaps uh, they are out of bounds. But I haven't had that opportunity and I am concerned based on the conversation that we've had that that we are straying dangerously close to um, not uh, not entering into a contact a contract because of the viewpoint of, um, of of a publication now that may not be what's going on here at all um, but uh, but I have that concern and I also have the concern that uh, that at least one of the two supervisors who represents folks who are served by the Marina Times didn't hear about this until um, and, and basically until this meeting. Um, and so I'm not prepared at all to um, vote to, to take the Marina Times out, although maybe at some future point, maybe next year, I don't know. But um, at, at this moment right now, I'm not. Supervisor Ronan? You're muted. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, a few points, but first a question um, because I understand Supervisor Mandelbaum's point and wondered if there's any uh, problem with delaying the vote today, sending it back to committee, this item back to committee, or uh, continuing it so that supervisors have the opportunity to. Uh, examine this publication and how it treats uh, the truth, um, because I think there are several issues. So can I at, at get an answer to that question before I make some points? It, is there any problem with delaying this item is, is, is the question. Yeah. <clears throat> are we, uh, so the question is whether or not we're still in contact with any publications as we still need to do that we that we if if we delay this item if we're if we're um, going to miss any noticing right. deadlines or et cetera yes exactly agree any anybody have an answer Mr. President yes I would defer to OCA on if there's a requirement in the administrative code but from the clerk's office perspective we would just continue to place ads into the newspapers that you approved from last year, which would include the Marina Times. Okay, thank you. I, Until I this appreciate item that. came back to the board. Sup Supervisor Fewer? Yeah, thank you oh. very much. And I didn't finish, by the oh, way. I oh, I, I, if I may, um, President Yi, I was going to make a recommendation. Could we sever just the Marina Times from this one item 
and can we move the rest of the publications forward and continue the Marina Times item for another meeting or back to committee? Are we able to do that? It seems as though I, that's the only publication that we are having discussion about. I don't hear anything from any of the other publications that are being brought forth. So I thought perhaps we can move that on, but the one contention, um, the item of contention, which is the Marina Times, we could continue that item for further discussion. I, I believe you could do that, but I'm gonna check with the um, uh, uh, city deputy director, uh, uh, city, what is it? DCA and Pearson. Deputy City Attorney. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pearson. Deputy City Attorney Ann Pearson. Um, yes, Supervisor Fewer, I think that you could duplicate this item um, and vote on the amendment to strike that one publication um, and move that forward and send the duplicated version back to committee. Okay. That's exactly what we did about six or seven years ago, I believe. When we had the issue with um, I forget which news, newspapers at the time. Through so, through the so, president, if I may, through the president, uh, yes, DCA uh, and Pearson is correct. However, there is another way, and that is called dividing the question. And you just simply divide the Marina Times from this, I believe it's a resolution. Yes, a resolution. And then you just move, the, you vote on the rest of it and keep this item, send it back. And refer it to committee. Yes. Um, so, Mr. President, oh, and I didn't know if I still had the floor, but I wanted to say that um, I would actually make that motion to divide the question and to move the arena times to continue that one item and move forward the rest of the um, the regular pub other publications that were listed. We'll, we'll correct the language of that in a second, but Supervisor Peskin, Wait, Supervisor Ronan. You, you were you were still on, so is it related? Go ahead. Well, I just never I never made my points. I asked a question and then I had several points, and then I I, I oh, understand supervisor Sorry. fears interruption, but I'd love to be able to continue. Yeah. So is that okay, President? Well, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. So um, a, a a few points. I, I really would uh, appreciate the the time for for colleagues to to go and investigate this outfit. Um, I, I I you know it, agree that uh, uh, a, a question about whether or not a certain publication uses certain tactics um, it, it, against certain groups and people that are beyond the pale, uh, which we opine up upon on a regular basis and use our dollars, whether it be uh, LGBTQ, we, we, I think we're not contracting or doing any business or traveling using pu public funds to travel to half the states in the union <laughs> at this point, right? Half or more the states in the union. If we can use our money to not do that, then I don't see how that differs from making a judgment that certain activity of a publication is beyond the pale and that those types of attacks against a group of people is uncalled for, um, something we do on a, on a regular basis. So I will say that. But aside from, and, and, and I do, and my second point is I wanna respond to Supervisor Peskin that you know, not to aid you, Supervisor Peskin, but in this day and age to not view social media posts by the publication as the as part of the journalism from that publication, I think is an old school notion that just doesn't hold truth today. I think we have to look to some of our younger legislators and um, how social media is used in our society and the way that it's changed our society and the way that when the New York Times or the BAR speaks on Twitter, that it speaks as part of its journalistic endeavor. And to deny that fact in this day and age, to me, seems just out of touch with the times and how journalism happens in our society. And then last but not least, the, the, the point that I'm making, although I agree with Supervisor Pre Preston completely and believe that this publication goes beyond the pale in its attack of groups of people, 
um, that is wrong in and of itself and not something that we should condone or use taxpayer dollars to support. There is another issue with this publication that is very different from any of the other publications that are listed and that we've chosen to advertise our meetings on. And that is a respect for the truth and facts and evidence. Every single publication there has spoken badly of probably all of us, right? It, it's part of the course, it's part of our job that people are allowed to criticize us, to do it unfairly, um, and, and, and often uh, to do so untruthfully. But when presented with facts that prove the falsity of claims, because there are truths that can be verified or disproven, and to then not retract those facts. And, and, and Marina Times has done this several times with several members uh, of, of, of staff in different departments of the city and county of San Francisco. They've done it to several elected officials. Then I don't know how we can call that serious journalism that we should be supporting with public dollars. So I understand that, you know, and, and quite frankly, I have so little respect for this for this outfit for these reasons that I hate giving them the limelight that we're giving them right now. So this is kind of counterproductive because they relish in this type of attention. Um, but I don't I, I, I don't read the, the, the Marina Times regularly either because it's not a publication that I respect or believe in their truth. But I would ask uh, my colleagues to spend some time looking and um, happy to discuss in more details the, the 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 examples that I cite here today, um, but I think from both a, a a matter of having some certain basic uh, uh, requirements for 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 papers that that uh, put themselves out as a serious journalism, uh, because none of the other outfits on 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 this list of 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 journalists would ever do that. I, I, I've talked to all of them and said, oh, you're factually wrong about this. And they immediately retract it with the exception of Marina Times. Um, and, and the fact that they've gone above in the, the, the pale of attacking people in specific groups based on their identification or based on their politics um, it, it, it are both two reasons why I hope you will do your research and, and, and seriously consider whether or not public dollars should be spent in this way. Finished? Yes, thank okay. you. Supervisor Fewer, were you finished? I wasn't sure. President Yee, I just wanted to make one point was that I think that the use of public funds is a really important one. And to say that if you, don't, if you don't agree with the publication or what they're writing, I get it. But I think the bigger issue is if we as a board, and the power has been given to us as the board. And so we can say, should we do this or we're doing that? But bottom line is, we have the power to deny this or we have the power to approve it. And we have the power to say whether or not this is something what public dollars we know that um, these dollars are earned off the backs of hardworking San Franciscans. And if we want to support this type of publication in with public dollars, this, this I think, um, discontinuance of this kind of, um, you know, public dollars to that publication is not going to kill the newspaper. I think that to say they won't have any news is simply not true. All it is is that we are no longer putting public dollars toward advertising in their publication. And it is the same way as, you know, um, I guess the Republican Party and everyone else giving spewing stuff. And I don't have to donate to them and I don't I don't have to support them. And I feel like the city and county of San Francisco as legislators, we actually have that ability now to say I will support this or I will not support this with public dollars. And bottom line is, is that people may not like that, but it is what it is. And today before us. The 11 of us, we actually have that decision to make, or we can continue it, but it is our decision to make. And so I think that we all come up from different places, quite frankly, but this is not saying, oh, um, this neighborhood will not have any news. This is just saying the neighborhood will not have the, their newspaper that actually um, advertises with public dollars, but this is by no means a media void in San Francisco. Um, there are many places to get actually information and outlets that give the exact same um, type of public notices and information. Um, with that, I am done, Pre uh, Mr. President, thank you. 
Okay, Supervisor Walton. You're muted, Supervisor Walton. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that, President Yee. I just wanted to reiterate some of what Supervisor Fewer stated. This really is not about the, the publication itself. Uh, it really is about the fact that we get to make a decision on whether or not we want taxpayers' dollars to go to advertisement, whether it be this particular publication or any publication. And we're not killing the newspaper. We're basically stating that we don't want taxpayers' money to go towards advertising in a particular publication. We have the right to do that. This is not censorship. We're not telling the paper what to write. Um, in fact, we don't even fund uh, what, what the paper writes. And this is about getting information out uh, that we feel is important to communities through publications across the city. So we have a right to say that we don't want taxpayer dollars to go towards something. This is, you know, from my standpoint, not just about what the actual publication writes, but it's about the fact that we don't, if we don't want taxpayer dollars to go towards something, we're put in a position to make that decision. And uh, that's why we have to, that's why we're having this conversation right now. I'll leave it at that. Supervisor Peskin. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as I said earlier, colleagues, I believe that Proposition J is outdated, outmoded, and needs to be changed. And because it was approved by the voters, it will need to be changed by the voters. I believe it is incumbent on all 11 of us, or majority of us, subject to input by various publications to actually revise Proposition J. Having said that, um, I do not believe, and let me preface that by saying at the beginning of this conversation, I was disposed to vote for Supervisor Preston's amendment. After hearing the subsequent words from Supervisor Preston and Supervisor Ronan, I realized that I do not want to be one eleventh of a body that is making a decision as to what is okay speech or not okay speech in a publication that we fund. If we want to go down the road of saying that the behavior of this publication, the Maria Times, is not acceptable, that should not be done by elected officials. That should be done, and Ms. Ronan, through the chair, I see you smiling, that should be done by a third party, by an unbiased party. That should not be done by 11 elected officials. And I see you pursing your lips, and through the president, I find that conduct unbecoming. And with that, I am not going to vote for the divided file. I actually believe that this is not the proper or appropriate role of the Board of Supervisors to play as to an individual publication. Now, I do believe that we should revise the entire scheme of how we publish our notices. I do believe, as I said earlier, that it is entirely inappropriate for Nextdoor to utilize our content without any attribution to the city. I think this is an entire area of public policy that we collectively and the clerk need to wrap our financial and policy brains around. But I, for one, am not going to vote, even though the behavior and statements of this particular publication, which President Yee has not written, were abhorrent. I am not going to vote to say that they cannot be treated the same way as El Reportero and the Sing Tao and all of our other public outreach newspapers. Not okay. Mr. President, the floor is yours, sir. Supervisor Marr. Thank you, President Yee. Um, I just, I'll be brief and first wanted to thank Supervisor Preston for raising the question and, um, and for this very robust discussion about um, whether um, the Marina, Marina Times is appropriate um, 
um, um, vehicle for us to to use in in our um, community outreach and, and advertising, along with the the, the many other diverse um, neighborhood newspapers and ethnic newspapers that 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 are part of this contract. Um, I you know, and I appreciate um, Supervisor Preston and, and Ronan, especially your you know the information you presented and and the the deep concerns that you 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 shared about the Marina Times and and um, but I guess like Supervisor Mandelman, you know, I I um, I feel not not prepared um, right now um, based on my my familiarity with, with the lack of familiarity with the Marina Times to make this important decision um, to exclude them from the contract um, and you know based on their um, jour journalistic and editorial content um, so um, um, I, I would I do support I think what Supervisor Fewer had had proposed it, um, 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 some way for us to move forward with with the contract with with all the other um, 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 outlets, and then um, allowing more time to to consider Marina Times. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Ronan, last word yeah. on. Okay, okay. I, um, before, before we vote on on uh, Supervisor Preston's um, motion, I want a clarification from Supervisor Fewer. Were you planning to? Uh, present another um, motion? Um, well, I would like to explore whether or not we can move on with other publications. And so, yes, yeah. I would make it possible to split the file, like a split the... Okay. Of, no, I just want to... And if, vote. Yeah, right. So I'd like to actually make that motion. I guess I can make it after Supervisor Preston's or whether no. or not Supervisor Preston's... No? Through the, through the president to the members, dividing the file is a privileged motion. It does take precedence over the actual motion that's on the floor, which is to strike or amend an item. And so uh, Board Rule 5.30 is division of the question, which does indicate that prior to the roll call for action on a matter, that dividing the question may take place. And that is not a motion, it's an individual supervisor's privilege to divide the question. Okay, so okay. Supervisor Field, would you like to call a motion to divide? Yeah, the I'd like to make a motion to divide the question. Okay. So the question you're dividing is Marina Times. To Just remove, um, uh, yes, Jasmine okay. Blue and LC from a group of other um, advertisers. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. So the motion is to divide the Mr. Mr. President, yes. uh, I will say my, my apologies for not being clear, but it is Supervisor Fewer's individual preference to divide this file. It does not need a motion. Now oh. what needs to happen? It's just she wants to divide. That's her privilege, which just means that now the board takes up this matter it's two issues essentially. It's the bulk of the okay. outreach periodicals, and then mm -hmm. uh, the Marina Times on on its own. And so we're having two votes right now. Exactly. All right, got it. Oh, so let's let's uh, Supervisor Peskin. Um, so just so that we're clear, I would like to merge the two issues back into one, uh, which is to say, on the divided file. Um, I'm, and, and by the way, I'm happy to continue the matter. I'm happy to send the matter back to committee, but I do not want these things taken separately. So I will vote no on both divided files. I think they must be taken together. Um, so for what that is worth, I'll be voting no on both and happy to send both to committee or to continue them at the full board. Okay. So I, Supervisor Preston? Thank you, President Yee. And I, I, I just to uh, address, since we had a motion pending before, a, a, a divided file now, I just wanted to, to, to clarify. First of all, I, I am uh, absolutely amenable to uh, the proposed uh, approach of, uh, or, or the divided file that we have now moving forward and, and approving the balance of it. Uh, I would propose uh, just a one week uh, continuance on, or it'd be my intent to move for just a one week continuance on the 
portion of the file that is Marina time so that folks can get the information they need. I don't know that we need to re-refer it to committee. Uh, I think folks can uh, uh, get some answers um, and we can get guidance from city attorney uh, during that during that week. So, so through the president, Safa, Safa Yi. But, so you're, you're, through the president, point of information, Supervisor Preston is asking for a continuance of both files divided? No, no. And if I may, uh, uh, Mr. President, so uh, my understanding is now the file uh, has been divided per yeah. Supervisor Ewer's uh, statement. Uh, uh, we, uh, I, I would, uh, I intend to, I don't know which will be called first, uh, so, I intend to vote. I'll, I'll, I'll clarify for you, Supervisor. Uh, Preston, okay, so if it's okay, we're going to right, but we're, just we're gonna, but just just to Supervisor Peskin's point, President Yi, my intent was to move to continue I, just the portion. I got, it. I got it. Thank you. Got that part. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're going to vote on the bulk of the, the 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 grouping, the larger grouping first. You will make it after we do that. There's only one thing left to vote on, and, and Supervisor Preston. You, you're going to make a motion to continue that one divided item to next week, okay? So right, and just, President Yee, just a point of clarification, do I need to withdraw the original yes, motion, yes. Or, is it, yes. or is it moot now that there's a divided file? No, you, you should withdraw it, Supervisor okay. Preston. So I, I and, will, and Supervisor Ronan as the second as well. I, I will I withdraw. withdraw the original motion. Okay. Supervisor Peskin? I'd like to make a motion to continue the bulk of the item to the same meeting as the divided portion. Okay, let me, I, I got it, don't worry. Um, but President, President, want to give Supervisor Safa a chance? Uh, he's yeah. on there. I, I, I just, you know, I, I held my second portion of my comments because we were focused on the actual amendment, but I actually think it's timely. Um, I think that, you know, Prop J, which was passed by the voters in 1994, was during a time when we could not have uh, contemplated social media, could not have contemplated the changes in which people get their information today. And, you know, when we're looking through, and this board has made a significant commitment to equity and looking at things through a, a racial equity lens, and now that Supervisor Fuhrer is leaving, thank you, Supervisor Fuhrer, for your tremendous work in this regard. When I look at these lists of these papers and I look at these lists, this is not a complete list. This is not a list that actually is reaching many of the intended communities that we're intending to, to reach with our advertisement. And I think the time has evolved. So many people get their information from social media. One of the social media outlets was referenced here. There's many other social media outlets that are referenced. And I think ultimately, I think the right thing to do given the intensity of this conversation, would be to send this item, the entire item, not divided, but the entire item back to committee to have a more robust conversation and invite the publications, invite members of the community to weigh in, and, though, and then to have a, a real full-fledged conversation about Prop J and what this means in terms of reaching so many of our different communities that are underserved by simply just putting an advertisement in a paper that so many don't even reference or use within those respective communities. That's not to say that places like Singtao, World Journal aren't reaching their intended communities, because I think in that particular community they are. But there's many of the ones that are listed here today that when we're thinking about a racial equity lens are not. And I think it's important that we have that full-fledged conversation. So I, I appreciate the, the attempt to, to, to divide the file. I appreciate the attempt to have a conversation to separate out what Supervisor Preston has identified in many ways that would be hate and threatening speech. But at the end of the day, this, was, this in many ways to me comes back to the First Amendment. And it also comes back to race and racial equity lens. And so for me, I would, I would think that the right thing to do would be to send the entire file back and let's have a full-fledged conversation about uh, the overall um, idea of what Prop J was and what reaching these communities means through these publications. So thank you, Mr. So, sure, Supervisor Safa, you just so you know um, what you're suggesting we will not take up unless everything else dropped off. That, that's fine. I just wanted I wanted to put it out there because I'm happy to make a motion to send this 
entire item uh, not non-divided back to committee so we can have a further conversation about it. Right, and you could do that if everything else fails. Uh, but Got it. There's if everything else fails. Thank yeah. you. Uh, okay, so one clerk, you will correct me if I, I got this wrong. There's been a motion to divide the file. There's a motion, and I said I would vote on on uh, the, the bulk of it first as the first vote. Supervisor Preston said he'll end up, or he's making a motion to continue the the one item. Supervisor Su uh, Press Pers Peskin is suggesting making a motion to continue the um, the larger group also. Mm -hmm. So I think okay. that is the motion that we're going to take. If there's if there's a second for that one, we're going to take th that one up first to see if people want to continue the larger one. Is that correct? That would be correct, uh, Super uh, Mr. President. Unless what I heard Supervisor Peskin say is he wanted to make a motion to reunite the the two items and then send it to committee. But but there was so, already a motion. Uh, it was only made to divide it. So, yes. Can you counter and a motion then? Which is well, yes. So. Supervisor Fewer has made her motion to divide. That is the question that is before us. Right. However, now it's ready for action. Both both pieces. And if another motion is made on top of that, um, then that would take precedence. Okay. Supervisor Peskin, do you, we, do you have uh, a motion? Mr. President, I, I am not making a motion to reunite. I'm going to vote no on both. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Madam Clerk. Yeah. I have a roll on the divided item that's the bulk of the. the, okay. um, the um, yes. Uh, on item page. 27, without the Marina Times. Supervisor Mandelman. No. Mandelman, no. Supervisor Marr. Aye. Marr, aye. Supervisor Peskin. No. Peskin, no. Supervisor Preston. Aye. Preston, aye. Supervisor Ronan. Aye. Ronan, aye. Supervisor Safai. No. Safai, no. Supervisor Stephanie. No. Stephanie, no. Supervisor Walton. Aye. Walton, aye. Supervisor Yi. Aye. Ye aye. Supervisor Fewer. Aye. Fewer aye. Supervisor Haney. Aye. Haney aye. There are seven ayes and four noes with Supervisors Mandelman, Peskin, Safai, and Stephanie in the dissent. Okay, so th that the resolution that has divided is passed by 7 4 vote. Okay. Madam Clerk, let's take the other motion, which is. To to continue the other portion, the Marina Times. And so that motion See was made by... To next meeting is what I heard. For a one week continuance, Mr. President. And that motion was made by... Preston. Preston. Preston and it was seconded by... Ronan. Supervisor Ronan. Okay. And the date is going to be uh, December 8th. One week to December 8th. Supervisor Mandelman. No. Mandelman, no. Supervisor Marr. Aye. Marr, aye. Supervisor Peskin. No. Peskin, no. Supervisor Preston. Aye. Preston, aye. Supervisor Ronan. Aye. Ronan, aye. Supervisor Safai. No. Safai, no. Supervisor Stephanie. No. Stephanie, no. Supervisor Walton. Aye. Walton, I. Supervisor Yi. I. Yi, I. Supervisor Fewer. I. Fewer, I. And Supervisor Haney. I. Haney, I. There are seven eyes and four noes with Supervisors Mandelman, Peskin, Safai, and Stephanie in the dissent. Okay, we have a seven four vote in uh, the sever divide the item. Uh, will be continued to next meeting on the 8th. Perfect. I think we're done, right? That's correct. Okay. <laughs>